I went from sleeping on the floor with my friends to running an agency doing $2 million a year in two years. See this? Because I just did after it was scheduled to be released two years ago. Where do we start? Let's start with the studio. This could be a long one, so giddy up. I need to design a space that is kind of all the, an intersection of, of, of all the things I love to do. And that's music, that's entrepreneurship, that's now carpentry and woodworking, and filming videos and, and taking photos in between. Okay, those, those four corners of the studio I talked about, my four loves, well, we delivered. Music corner. Build corner. Entrepreneurship corner. Full of fireworks. Used to be photo video corner. Now it's just, now it's just all my books. I mean, this is where I learned like literally everything. I have since switched to e-reading, however, because, well, we move around way too much to have all this crap e-reading. That's our One Switch podcasting studio where we probably recorded, I don't know, a hundred, couple hundred episodes of the Smart Nonsense podcast. This is also exactly where we pitched the My First Million podcast that we could build out a studio just like that for them. And, and we launched our business off the back of that, but more on that in a bit. We pitched the All In podcast in a similar way. I've got the artifacts from that craziness here. Look, there's Chamath and Jason Calacanis. I actually spelled his name wrong before that went out. David Friedberg, I'd like to encase all of that in acrylic someday. But this place has largely sat unused like the last year or so, which I'm actually okay with because we've been moving around so much, and who knows where we'll be long term. So while I had all these visions for what this this hub, this place would be, well, life has taken a pretty different path in two years. It's so nuts. So Athena and I, she's still around in two years, or two months, who knows. We're supposed to be in like the very short future converting a uh, sprinter van into a tiny home. I wonder if that ever materialized. Okay, yes, I'm still with Athena. I learned like over some time that she doesn't really like to be in these videos and that's okay. So over the last year especially, I've started to pivot these away from like really just lifestyle videos to more strictly business. And I think that's just like a better separation of, of work and life anyway. And then every once in a while, we'll do like the random lifestyle video on here, but uh, anyway. Uh, we built the van and we lived in it for six months, which was great, but frustrating, especially for someone like me who's motivated by like routines and structure and habits. But ultimately, like, I'm really glad we did it and we'll probably do it again this fall for another six months because I know Athena does and I definitely miss aspects of it. Just like the, the freedom of driving somewhere new and working and exploring every day, every week is, is really quite exciting. And I think those are all good things in terms of not living a life full of regrets and, and what ifs and could haves, you know? What else, what else, what else, what else, what else? Oh! We got a dog. I think if you're an entrepreneur, a four-year-old, obedient, housebroken, trained, slightly tired <laughs> dog, it's probably the way to go. Then you don't have all that puppy work. Okay, back to the studio. Pretty 
cool, huh? I'm still living at home, but what I figured was my priority had to be a place to work. I had to find somewhere where I could show up every day and not be bogged down by mundane of being stuck at home all day. It was getting in the way of my creating. All these self-development people. I read manuals. You have to have this plugged in the whole time. It's because it has made its way down to- One of the biggest things from this video was like, holy shit, I don't even talk like that anymore. I sound naive, like stupid in a lot of ways, confused, full of life. I don't, I don't know, I'm still, Full of life, I guess, but I don't know. It's it's strange, but I think that's I think that's great. Did we get a lick I, of you know, if you're not looking back at yourself and cringing, then you're probably not growing enough. And I think it's cool too that we have all of this footage looking backward to cringe at. Like that was the reason we, both myself and Dylan, like started doing all of this was to have these things as a daily diary. It's pretty amazing to see too that like there's a definite shadow of myself in that video. A shadow of who I am today. The core is the same. A lot of the principles I operate from are the same or similar. But the, the things I say, the way I say them, and like how I portray myself, totally different. And I know in that video too, like I was super fed up with where I was at home and in life and like the, the freedoms I needed at home and in life as an entrepreneur. I'd like to think that all of those kind of freedoms are, are met now in terms of the ability to create in a place like this, the ability to travel and the freedoms that money and business have, have allowed me. But I, I think we'll, we'll have to see in another two years if that's the case. Urbana Champagne, coffee table, table book with dogs that look like their owners. Just a number of things. And then I wanna start Dunbar. The business, the business, well, which one? I hinted at a meal service and a dog book photography project and sure, I'm like, they're both great ideas, but nothing without execution. I talked in that video about starting Dunbar, a social network that connects you with your 150 closest friends, with my friend who said he would quit everything to work on it, Evan. I started Dunbar, Evan didn't quit his job, but my buddy David did do that alongside Ben and Joe. We ultimately got smashed by the pandemic. Nobody was going out and meeting with friends in person, but also like my own naivete. I didn't know how to run a business, how to hire, how to resolve conflict, how to say no to things how to start small, how to find product market fit. But my buddy Dylan did at that time. And Dylan was running that My First Million all-in podcast production thing. And Dylan had a whole lot of demand for these, these podcast clips, but he sure as hell didn't even have an LLC around them. I remember My First Million was asking Dylan, like, what do you charge to do this? Tell us what you charge to do this. And he's calling up the accountant like, uh, how do I even deposit a check? We're, we're not a company, how do I deposit a check for this thing? And that sounded like product market fit to me. Dylan got the bank account, he spun up the business and he needed help operating the thing. So he called me up from my floor mattress in our apartment and I had to make one of the hardest decisions in my life around shutting down Dunbar. And I don't think I did it in a great way. I learned a ton of lessons. It was messy, it was a co-founder thing, it was a living thing, but ultimately the Smart Nonsense podcast became Smart Nonsense Media, the agency. I went in full time with Dylan and we were getting the attention of My First Million being name dropped on the All In podcast. Then Naval Ravikant and Will Smith and we worked on Hassan Minhaj's newest comedy special, coming soon. We were saying yes to everything because we were on a rocket ship. And then we looked around and realized we hate people. We hate people and I'm, I'm being hyperbolic, but as an agency saying yes to everything, we realized we were scaling one-to-one -one linearly, right? So every doubling of client work means we're doubling in team size. And when you're doubling in team size because of Metcalf's law, that means you are quadrupling in how you communicate. Right, so, so Dylan and I are no longer hiring. 
When you get to about 15 people, you stop knowing everybody and, and what they're working on. We were 10 people, then 20, then 40, then 60. So we shut it down and decided that the only way Smart Nonsense Media could scale nicely, so we thought the only way, was if we became a marketplace. Clipped Media, a more fanciful name for the Tesla of video editing, was born. And of course, that, that video editing marketplace assumption turned out to be wrong. The team was up in arms. Dylan's like, I, I can't be CEO, I'm failing everybody. So I stepped up, but we frankly missed the, the funky days of being Smart Nonsense Media, a small agency. So we ultimately reverted back to something more like an agency and stopped hiring. And that's kind of where we're at today. I wanna to talk about three important points here, then I'll wrap up with numbers and, and give you my biggest takeaways on all of this madness. Holy smokes. How has nobody told me? I'm just sitting here talking to the camera and this. <sighs> One, there's this, this mental model I believe comes from Jeff Bezos around decision making and it goes like this. There are two types of decisions you can make. Reversible decisions and irreversible decisions. And Jeff Bezos compares this to doors. He says reversible decisions are doors that open both ways. You can make your decision, you can go through the door, and you can walk back out if you need to. But irreversible decisions, well those are one-way doors, and if you walk through that door, you're stuck in the new room. Now Bezos says you should make reversible decisions, the ones where you can go in and come back out as fast as humanly possible. Because you don't know what you don't know and you can always walk that decision back and, and come back out the door. Irreversible decisions though, you need to think a lot harder about. And what's important was our switch and most of the decisions we make, but our switch from agency to marketplace was a reversible decision. And we reversed it. Now, we moved quick and it wasn't easy, but that speed allowed us to quickly test that model and now we're in a better place with more data because of it. Second, Derek Sivers, the founder of CD Baby, which later became an important partner for early iTunes, wrote this book called Anything You Want. And it's about the art of business. Your business is your little thing, your little world where you get to make the rules and build your product. And it can be anything you want. So we knew we wanted to be more like an agency again, kicking it with our team, but an unconventional one that, that doesn't waste time with meetings and pitches and sales and, and calls. And that, that kind of anything you wantness is what's allowed us to scale way more easily than traditional agency or marketplace. We productize Smart Nonsense Media's clips. On our way to work, I see, in all caps, first sale. Is this the first clip sale? It's it! Fun. We actually like kind of soft launch clipped on Twitter. We're launching clipped. Okay, let me let me preface the numbers section by saying like I haven't even gone into all of the existential crises and and late nights, the fears that a real company with real teammates that have real lives and real families and real bills to pay is counting on us to, to work hard and deliver. Amidst all of that, and even amidst all of our successes that I'm talking about here, it's like you have to do as a founder everything in your ability to keep your baby, to keep this thing alive. I mean, there have been more months than not where payday for our 60 person company has come down to the last day of the month where Dylan and I are scrambling like madmen to get things sold. You know, we've, we've put our entire lives on credit cards to invest everything back into this beast. And finally, even for a cash flow positive company from day zero, one and a half years in, we are just getting a, a glimmer, a glimmer of stability as a company. Okay, July 6th, 2022, here is clip.co. We're still marketed as some hybrid between a video editing marketplace and an agency. That's to be sorted out soon. We're a team of 58 with 47 clients. We do $154,000 in monthly recurring revenue. That's $1,848,000 per year. We're working with Hassan Minhaj, Ali Abdal, 
uh, Darmesh Shah, Redis, HubSpot, Buzzsprout, the, the, the platform that started that podcast, Morning Brew and, and others. We've just kicked back on hiring to double down on our personal brands. We're releasing a lot of shorts on YouTube and TikTok, and we're trying to like quadruple down on what our company really does best as an animation studio. We're talking with Patty Galloway and his team about offering strategy to clients. The future is very, very exciting. So what did we learn? Okay, I'm gonna make this section one thing because it's so impactful and I've been dropping other little learnings and breadcrumbs throughout the video. So thanks for making it to the end of this video. Now, you've probably heard this or I've at least heard this a million times, but you wouldn't believe it until it really happens. Steve Jobs in his famous Stanford commencement address. Of course, it was impossible to connect the dots looking forward when I was in college, but it was very, very clear looking backwards 10 years later. Again, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in the future. You have to trust in something. Your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. And there's this funny story I don't think I've told on here, but when I started this channel and I started building this crazy studio, a friend of Dylan and mine told Dylan, what's Henry doing? Why would I want to tune into his videos every week and watch him hammer two by fours. What's in it for me? Well, for him. And, and he's got a valid point. But just like Steve Jobs randomly taking a calligraphy course that influenced fonts and the user interface for Macintosh as a whole, it's my two by fours that led to me moving into this studio that gave proof to Dylan that he should move out of his mom's house and come to Chicago, that showed the My First Million podcast what we could do, that birthed Dunbar and killed it and taught me every lesson about starting a business that found me working with Dylan and growing a company and making crazy videos and getting attention and building a van and living on the road for six months and realizing stability is really nice and we should be more grateful for it. Becoming a company of 50 people and almost getting ousted for our decision making, getting us back on track and now we're here. It's all related to me hammering those two by fours. And you wouldn't know it at the time, but connecting those dots now Looking backward, two years later, it's crystal clear. Thank you for being here and caring and cheering us on there are very exciting days ahead and I'm stoked. Okay, I will see you in the next one and the next two-year time capsule.